Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce the concept of integration by parts and go through how we get the formula in order to do it. I'll do the examples about integration by parts in a separate video. So this video is just an explanation of where the formula comes from and sort of just the basics of what it is used for. So the main motivation here is that we're wondering how do we integrate when we have a product of functions. So we've learned how to integrate quite a few things at this point, but we don't yet know how to integrate products of functions in all cases. So sometimes we do know how to integrate them. Let me show you what that might look like. Okay, so I've written here two example problems that have products of functions that we're trying to find antiderivatives for. So the first example has a sine times cosine, and the second example is x times cosine x. So I'm going to say that for this first example, we can actually solve this already by using straightforward u substitution. So in this, I'm seeing that sine and cosine are related with derivatives. So if I let u be sine of x, then the derivative of u would be cosine of x dx. And we can use this substitution to integrate. So we would just have the integral of u du once we use that substitution. And the antiderivative of u is just 1 half u squared plus c. And we replace back for u to get 1 half sine squared of x plus c as our antiderivative. So in this case, we actually know how to integrate this particular product of functions because one of the terms is the derivative of the other. So we could probably even do this the other way by using u as cosine and du as negative sine and going from there. But because sine and cosine are related with derivatives, we can use u substitution here. However, this is in contrast to the second example. So in this second example, we have x times cosine of x. So this is a product of those two functions. But here, u substitution isn't going to work. I can't do u substitution because one of the functions isn't the derivative of the other. I can't let u be x and then du be cosine. That just wouldn't work because the derivative of x is 1 or the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So somehow we're going to need a different method in order to integrate this product of functions. So in summary, sometimes, as in example 1, we can integrate a product of functions using u substitution. However, in some cases, like in example 2, we are going to need another method, and this method is specifically called integration by parts. All right, so we're gonna make this new method called integration by parts to help us integrate products of functions. So to get us started, it might not be too surprising that we're going to go back to product rule from derivatives or from differential calculus. Okay, so let's start with the product rule. This tells us how to take the derivative of a product of two functions. Let's think of the functions f of x and g of x. So if I'm taking the derivative of f times g, I'm going to do the derivative of f times g left alone, so f prime times g, plus f times the derivative of g, so f times g prime. And this is my product rule for derivatives. So because we know that integration by parts is going to deal with products of functions, what I'm going to do is use this as a starting point and integrate both sides to come up with my formula. So this one's a little less intuitive than some of the other formulas we've gone through, so just follow with me and we'll get to the formula at the end and then hopefully it'll make sense to you. Okay, so I'm taking a true statement and I'm going to integrate both sides and look at the result. So on the left-hand side, when I take the antiderivative of the derivative, they undo each other or sort of cancel each other out, and so I'm just left with f times g. Then on the right-hand side, I'm taking the integral of this sort of long string of things, so I'm going to split it up into two integrals. The integral of f prime times g, and the integral of f times g prime. Also, as a note, we're not going to worry about plus c's on these indefinite integrals until the very end. So at the very end, we'll put in our plus c to represent what we need it to, but for now, we're just not going to worry about it too much. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is take this term and move it over to the left hand side. The point here is that we're just trying to solve for one of these integrals and that's going to be useful to us later when we write the final version of the formula. So just trust me for now that we're doing this for a reason. So I have my f times g and now I'm just going to subtract this integral which is the integral of f prime times g. And then this is equal to what's left on the right hand side which is the integral of f times g prime. Now. To help us out and sort of get rid of all of these f of x, g of x, all these of x terms, we're going to do a substitution just to make things look easier for us and it'll really help in the long run since this integration of my parts is going to be based on a sort of fancy substitution. Let's say we have u equals f of x and v equals g of x. Then what we're going to do is find their derivatives. So we're going to find du and dv. So du is just f prime of x dx and dv is just g prime of x dx. So using these substitutions, we're going to rewrite the above statement using the u and v variables instead. So first I have f times g. So using my substitution, that's going to be u times v. Then I subtract the integral of f prime times g. And so here my g of x is going to be my v. And then the f prime of x dx is my du. So we've so far simplified the left hand side of this equation. Let me highlight some of the colors just to make sure you're seeing the substitution. Okay, this is then equal to the integral of f times g prime of x dx. So my f is u and the g prime of x dx is dv. So I have that the left hand side is equal to the integral of u dv. Okay, so what we've done here is taken our statement of the product rule from derivatives, we've integrated it, and now we have this new statement that we know to be true that we're just trying to manipulate and somehow use to our advantage. So right now this might kind of seem like, hey, Claire, what the heck am I going to do with this? I don't really know what's going on. But let me show you sort of what the purpose of this is and give you the final statement of the integration by parts formula. Just remember that in the other videos, we're going to go through the examples. So here I'm really just showing you where the formula comes from and giving you the statement of it. Okay, so the main idea here is that we have an integral and we're going to rewrite it in terms of another integral. So you can see in this formula, we have integrals on both sides of the equal sign. So we're going to start with the integral u dv, and we're going to suppose that this is the integral that you were given at the beginning, that you are trying to solve and you're not sure what to do. So for us in that previous example that we started with, this would be the integral of x times cosine of x dx, where we weren't sure how to solve the integral and we saw that it was a product, but we didn't know what to do. So this is going to be what we start with and our task then and what integration by parts does for us is it allows us to rewrite it as something new. So we can write it as u times v minus a new integral where that new integral is v du. And the hope is that that new integral v du is something you do know how to integrate. So you're taking something you don't know how to integrate and by splitting it up into parts, that's why it's called integration by parts, you can now write it as something new that you know how to evaluate. And that's the power of integration by parts. So there's a little more here to do, like we need to determine how to look at a problem and recognize a u dv situation and then use integration by parts on it. But we'll go through that process when we walk through some examples in the following videos. But for now, this is just where the formula comes from for integration by parts, and keep it in mind as you go to the next videos and start working through some examples. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.